This is the story of a young colony of desert long-legged ants named the Raiders of Arrakis, led by their queen, the Duchess of Dune. Although their numbers are few, these fearsome little hunters have a fire in them that longs for greatness. But every empire starts as a gamble against extinction, and the desert is unforgiving. If these pioneers hope to become an empire, they must first overcome the challenges ahead. Their species, Nova Messer Coccarelli, is native to the arid regions of the southwestern United States and northern Mexico. Recognized by their elongated bodies, spider-like legs, and two distinctive spines, they are mainly insectivores, opting for a highly carnivorous diet. While it's fun watching them in the tube, I want to watch them crawl around and explore, so I'll use this outworld I created myself. I'm totally kidding, I bought it. But before I put them in, I'll add an anti-escape barrier. This stuff just makes it super slippery so they can't get out. Time to let my little predators free. Free to roam the vast desert, void of any features or effort put forth by their ant keeper to make it resemble a natural habitat. Oh, look, maybe I was lazy on this one, but eventually I will make them a proper desert landscape. The first worker darted out before I could even hit record. Excuse me, did you hear me say action? Oh wait. No, you didn't, because you don't have ears. True fact, ants can't hear. She was soon joined by her sisters as they surveyed the desert land outside their tube for the first time. Now, in my experience, the queens are usually pretty shy and tend to retreat into the nest whenever there's a disturbance. But not the Duchess of Doom. She clambered right up to the action to see what was going on. And I've noticed this on multiple occasions. She is fearless and feisty. She even came out of the nest once presumably to aid in battle if needed. This little huntress found a piece of mealworm and was trying to bring it back into the nest. Come on, come on, you got it. Almost there. Ah, teammate back there is straight up not helping. Wait, is she giving up? Oh, nope, looks like she's trying another strategy. Uh, hmm, okay. A big reason I wanted a colony of these ants is because they're known to be highly aggressive feeders, which didn't seem to be the case. I wanted to see stuff like this, and this, but they were kind of casual about it, at least for now. At one point, they took fruit flies out of the dish, carried them to the other side of the outworld, and arranged them in a straight line. Somehow this was actually more terrifying. They definitely have a- hold up, where are you going with that pupa? The desert is no place for a baby. That was weird. They definitely have a battle-ready nature to them. Like the fact that there's always a worker standing guard at the entrance of the nest, ready to rally the troops at a moment's notice. However, the colony was about to face a threat that they wouldn't be able to fight with muscle. This began when I found a dead worker. My first reaction was asking, what did I do wrong this time? Because in the past, I've had colonies and queens die because of mistakes that I've made. In fact, I could do a whole video on things I've learned not to do. But as the days went by, everyone else was fine. Until a week later, I found another one. Hmm. Every passing week brought another casualty. This was worsened by the fact that there wasn't any brood left. And little by little, the colony was shrinking. Until I discovered this. The Duchess had laid a new batch of eggs. Finally, there was some hope for the colony's future, but I still wasn't sure why the other workers were dying. One day, I found body parts all over their test tube. Had they been eating each other? I swear I was feeding them, but maybe it wasn't enough. So I gave them a big old tray of fruit flies, and while they did eat a couple, most of them ended up in their garbage pile, along with another dying worker. I started giving them more and more food, hoping that would turn things around but they didn't seem interested. I continued anyway, but it wasn't working. The colony was looking sparse, down to just three workers and a small pile of brood. I had to try something else. And after talking to some of my ant keeping friends, I realized there was one very important thing that they needed that I was not giving them enough of, heat. These were desert ants that thrive at high temperatures and I'd been keeping them in a room around 68 to 75 degrees. So I changed their setup, putting their tube back on the heat mat, 
and running a heat cable underneath the entrance. Then I waited. A couple weeks later and the workers were tending to their growing brood over the heat cable, neatly grouped into nice orderly piles by development stage. They also started eating again. The heat was working. That's when my friend Nami hooked me up with an incubator so I could keep them at a controlled, consistent temperature between 82 and 87 degrees, at least until they got their numbers up. I switched them to a tubs and tubes setup like this, put them in the incubator along with my harvester ants who also like heat, and within a week, I already saw dramatic results. For one, the ants had a lot more energy. Whenever I take the box out and open the lid, they run out, zip around the tank, ready to fight. These were the little warriors that I knew. I gave them a whole cricket and eagerly waited to see what would happen. One of them started to attack, which was really fun to watch. This is what I was looking for. I never saw her drag it into the nest, but by morning, it was gone. No legs, no head, no antenna, nothing. It had been completely devoured. Every last fragment, the raiders of Arrakis were back. The Duchess was ramping up egg production too, and their brood pile started to grow. Eggs, larvae, and pupa soon to join the colony and strengthen its numbers. Several weeks later, and the raiders of Arrakis now stand 12 warriors strong, with many reinforcements on the way. The incubator was really the secret to their resurgence, which has also benefited another rising power, the bulldozers my colony of rough harvester ants who have now amassed a pile of brood to rival that of the raiders. In fact, at the time of filming this, both colonies stand at exactly 12 workers with a population boom on the horizon. And that's when I realized this wasn't just growth, this was an arms race. A war was brewing to become the dominant force of the desert. The question is, which faction will rise to power first? We'll just have to wait and see as the story of the ants marches on. If you enjoyed this story, drop a like and check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.